By faith, Noah prepared. We have seen already that faith is the means by which God saves us, and we see that faith results in action. We're going to be talking about that today in this special passage. I know a lot of uh, uh, the folks that watch this channel, as well as my other channel, uh, are more on the preparedness side of things. And so we're going to be talking about Noah. Noah, by faith, prepared for the, the coming storm. And we're going to be talking about how we can do that well, but also how we can do that in such a way that we are not um, uh, acting in disbelief or in fear of, of the world or of people, um, but rather we are trusting in God. If you haven't already had some time in prayer and a time of confession, please hit the pause button and do that now, and we will be right back here. Let me read through the passage here in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. It's a simple passage, but there's so much in here to be discussed. It says, by faith, this is the hall of faith, so it's uh, listing out different people of faith in the Old Testament and explaining how we can understand faith uh, by their actions. By faith, Noah, after he was warned about what was not yet seen, and he was motivated by godly fear, built an ark to deliver his family. By faith he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. So, Noah, he was warned. He saw what was to come. God explicitly told him what was to come and also explicitly told him what he was to do. But then we see that he did three things, essentially, and we'll go through these. By faith, Noah built. He built an ark. By faith, Noah condemned the world. We'll discuss what that kind of means. And by faith, Noah became an heir, an heir of righteousness that comes by faith. The, became an heir refers to basically salvation. He became a member of the family of God. He was redeemed. He was saved, however you want to phrase it. That third one is talking about his personal salvation, spiritual, eternal salvation. But these first two, he was not eternally saved because he built. He was not eternally saved because he condemned the world either. But we, we who see the changing times have a conviction of things uh, getting more dangerous, whether that's from your understanding of history and just seeing the, the ebbs and flows of history that, that good times do not last forever, or your understanding of the universe and you see that that bad decisions, wrong decisions, uh, lead to consequences, naturally. Spiritually, we understand this, that, that God is not mocked. What a person sows, they will reap. Whatever you plant in your garden, that's the stuff you're going to get up. You're not going to get something else. If you continue to make horrible decisions, hurtful decisions to other people, short-sighted, decisions sometimes, that's what you're going to reap. You're going to reap those bad rewards. And so, by faith, Noah saw the, the difficulty coming. He was warned. And he, he obeyed what God said to do. He took uh, extraordinary effort. Uh, he took about 100 years to build an ark. A giant ship, which didn't make sense at the time because there was no sea, there was no ocean, there was no rain, so what is this giant boat for? But yet, by faith, he trusted God and built. We need to take action in our lives. Not just squishy, feel-good faith, but faith that has legs, that takes steps. He was warned about a particular thing, a time of judgment that was coming. 
and was needed to take practical um, effect to that. When we know what is coming or when we know that something could come, uh, there's a reason why I have fire extinguishers in the house. I don't have fire extinguishers in the house because I plan to set my house on fire. I sure hope I don't set my house on fire. But I have fire extinguishers throughout the house because it could happen. And we should all be prepared for things that could happen, uh, whether it's a car breaking down. And it's responsible to do so. Uh, leaders of families, leaders of organizations like churches uh, should think ahead. Whether it's a business and you're, you're asking the question of um, can we continue to support the families of the people that are working for us? That's wise thinking, to think ahead. Noah built an ark for him and the seven people that got on board, as well as all of the animals that God was going to save through him. God did not work a miracle and, and poof, there was a boat. Through natural means, through the obedience of, of, of man and his family, God brought deliverance. And God often chooses to bring deliverance through people. Are there going to be people hurting in your neighborhood? Are there going to be people hurting in your community? Are you taking active steps to help them if... Uh, if trouble comes. A lot of people are getting more prepared for themselves, but what about for the people around you as well? Are you getting more prepared for them? Are you taking uh, intentional steps, not just to be a uh, refuge for you and yours, but also for other people? And that's kind of where we get into the second part here. By faith, Noah condemned the world. In uh, Second Peter and also in First Peter, uh, we see that, that Noah was a preacher. In 2 Peter 2.5, it says he was a preacher of righteousness. Not only was Noah building an ark, but he was preaching too. He was, he was an evangelist of the day. He was trying to get other people to wake up, repent of the ways, the evil ways that they were doing things, the violence, the wickedness of the world, turn from that and turn towards God. Noah was preaching to the world, but he was also preaching to his family. Seems like the only people that heard him were the seven people that got on the ark with him. And that may be, but we shouldn't give up on the world. We should continue to preach. We should preach um, to all those who would hear us. And that is, a, that is a challenge that we all need to face, is this separating ourselves from the world, but yet also um, being a light in it. And we need to be taking steps for that as well. Not just being concerned for the, the physical well-being of other people, but also being concerned for the spiritual well-being of them as well. And then thirdly, we see that by faith, Noah became an heir. He... Set, he, he separated himself from the world in hope that people would separate themselves as well with him uh, to come with. By faith, he prepared uh, for what was to come. But he also, by faith, became an heir of righteousness. And that is linked um, to his turning his back on the world. And we, we often talk about that. By faith... By repentance, we are saved. And faith and repentance are just two sides of the same coin. You can't have faith without repentance. And you can't have re true repentance without faith. And the, the simple fact is that as we turn towards God, we must turn away from the world, turn away from sin. We, we, we have, repentance means to turn away from. We've been chasing the world, chasing the lies of the world so much but now we turn away from those lies and we turn to the promises of God because we believe what he has to say to us. By faith, Noah, after he was warned about what was not yet seen and motivated by godly fear, we should have godly fear. We should fear the judgment of God. When we see the sin of, every, of our nation around us, when we see the sin of our own selves, 
we should fear that there will be consequences for that. It says that he built an ark to deliver his family. By faith he condemned, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Would God have blotted out the world if Noah had not gotten himself to his place of safety? That's a whole another discussion right there. Perhaps, perhaps that is why, um, because we saw that with Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah, that God uh, was not willing to destroy the city until Lot had, the righteous man had gotten uh, to safety. And so, not that we should try to use ourselves as human shields, but there is a sense which when we pull ourselves out intentionally from the world, we are opening it up potentially for the judgment of God. And that may be what is required. We should be listening to our souls, listening to what God has to say to us, whispering to us. Now, don't do anything crazy and don't do anything that's sinful, but God, through His Holy Spirit, will direct you sometimes to do things, to do something for that person over there. Share the gospel with that person over there. Ask that person over there how they're doing or if you can pray for them. And sometimes the Lord lays on your heart, it's time to leave this city. It's time to move somewhere else. It's time to change jobs. When you're spending regular times of prayer and times in the Word with the Lord, He will speak to you. And we should be sensitive to listen to those things. Get godly counsel along the way, especially for larger decisions. Um, run it by some people that you respect who, who love the Lord before you do things. All right, folks. Let me pray a prayer of blessing over you before you go. Lord God, I pray that you bless each and every one watching this video today, that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit, that you would help us to take stands when we need to, to prepare for hard times that may come and to prepare in order to be a blessing to others. But help us not to ever stop preaching the gospel to everyone. And Lord, help us to preach the gospel first and foremost to ourselves. Lord, I pray all these things in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Thanks so much for joining with and uh, I will see you guys again next week. There's a couple uh, Bible studies up on the screen that you might want to check out. I'll see you over there, or I'll see you later. God bless you all.